Hi everyone, this is Dr. Nauli. Uh, first off, I want to apologize a little bit. My voice is a little out because I have a little cold, but uh, hopefully we can go through this video without any interruption. Um, so in this particular video and uh, the next series of videos, I want to talk about the types of reactions that um, we use to categorize the different types of chemical reactions. And so the first thing I want to talk about is just why we do that, why we categorize reactions to certain types. The first reason is just because it helps us understand the underlying mechanism for the reaction. Because as it happens, once we realize that a particular reaction, for example, is an acid-base reaction, that reaction will have a general mechanism that's the same uh, like all the other acid-base reactions. So it helps us understand better uh, how the molecules actually go together to form the products. And of course, the second um, use of classifying reactions into types is that it helps us predict what the products might be. Because once you know that it's an acid-base reaction, there are certain types of products that's going to be formed as a result of that. Okay, so that's the reason why uh, we want to start by learning about the different groups or class of reactions. <clears throat> so I'm going to start by just talking about the fair, fairly general types of reactions that um, a lot of reactions belong to one of these groups. And there's basically five of them that I'm going to be talking about um, as, as we go along. So we start first one with combination reactions. Fairly sim simply, this just means that you have a reaction where you have several reactants combining to form a single product. So the examples here, as you can see, are all of that type where you have, in this case, aluminum and oxygen combining together to form uh, aluminum oxide. And then you have, in this case, sodium oxide and water combining to form sodium hydroxide, another one product. And here's copper sulfate and water combining together to form copper uh, sulfate pentahydrate. So all of these are combination reactions. Decomposition reaction is exactly the opposite. You have a, um, a particular substance breaking apart into simpler substances. So all of the ones example shown here are basically decomposition reactions. And uh, one of the most uh, famous decomposition reaction is this reaction shown here, which is uh, ammonium dichromate breaking apart into nitrogen, water, and uh, chromium oxide. And the reason is because this reaction is actually very, um, you know, it generates uh, a flame. And at the end, you have these ashes that look like volcanic ashes. So it's often called the, the volcano um, uh, reaction. And the unique thing about this is that you generate this uh, fire without the need of oxygen gas, which is generally needed for uh, any kind of um, uh, reaction that, you know, generates flame. Okay, so the third of this reaction is just a continuation from the prior one, which is combustion reaction. The earlier I said that you generally, need a, you generally need oxygen for a flame to be generated. And that's what we see in combustion reactions, basically reaction of a substance with oxygen gas in such a way that you get this uh, flame um, to generate. That's the common one that we see when we, for example, um, turn on the Bunsen burner with a lighter. That's a reaction between methane gas with oxygen gas in this case. And as that flame starts to burn, then you generate CO2 and H2O gas. Um, the other reaction the combustion is this one right here, the formation of the oxide. So any kind of reaction, usually with oxygen, is called combustion reaction. Um, the fourth type of reactions is single replacement, or sometimes also called single displacement reactions. These are reactions in which element in a compound is replaced by another element. In other words, you're doing a, a you, you take out one of the elements, you replace it with another element that's reacting with it. So usually this is categorized into different uh, certain names depending on what element is being displaced. In this particular case, you have hydrogen displacement, where here the examples show that you have iron reacting with sulfuric acid 
and the product is iron sulfate and hydrogen. So you notice here that hydrogen in the sulfuric acid is actually being displaced, it's being swapped out by the iron. So that's why we call the single replacement or single displacement. So the hydrogen is being displaced in this case. Um, this, by the way, can also be water, um, but the metals have to be a different metal. It depends on, um, it could be water or an acid, but then uh, the hydrogen can be displaced depending on what kind of metal we use. A metal displacement is just basically if you have two different metals. So one of the metals exists as an element, the other metal exists as an ionic compound. And you can see here you have magnesium titanium chloride. The titanium is being displaced by the magnesium to form magnesium chloride and titanium solid. We can also see displacement of halogen by another halogen. Remember halogens are these uh, group 7 elements. So chlorine gas can react with potassium bromide in this case and the chlorine gas will displace the bromide ion that was originally here so then the product you get is potassium chloride and bromine liquid okay a related concept with single displacement reactions is something called the activity series which you probably have heard of from a prior course in chemistry uh, what this is is a table that ranks various metals in terms of their activity and what activity means is the ability of a metal to displace another metal in a single replacement reaction okay so usually what happens is you're gonna have a metal rank higher on the activity series if it can displace another metal so for example in this case you have magnesium and titanium magnesium will be ranked higher in terms of its activity compared to titanium because magnesium can displace titanium <clears throat> in the single displacement reaction so that's what it says here a more active metal can displace the aqueous cation of a less active metal we don't really uh, I'm not going to use much of activity series in this class uh, there's a related concept that you'll learn in chem 12 uh, called the reduction potential and that's really going to be uh, I think a much more useful concept to understand um, how these types of reactions happen but I just point this out because also in an experiment you will be asked to actually build a partial activity series as a result of your experimental results so I just want you to understand that an activity series is basically just a ranking of the ability of metals to displace another metal or sometimes to displace hydrogen so again in this case magnesium would be ranked higher than uh, titanium because magnesium can displace titanium in a single displacement reaction the last type of reaction I want to mention here is something called a double replacement or exchange reaction this is a reaction where there's uh, an exchange of parts between two ionic compounds so either cations are being exchanged among the two ionic compounds or you can think of the anions as being exchanged here's a couple examples of them so in this case you see sodium chloride and silver nitrate and it's forming silver chloride and sodium nitrate and hopefully it's pretty clear that what happens is the sodium is now being partnered up with the nitrate as the in the product and the silver is being partnered up with the chloride in the product so it's sort of like you swap the cations of these two ionic compounds they swap partners to form the product the same uh, idea is illustrated in this example you have HCl reacting with NaOH if you swap the cations you have Na partnering with Cl so that forms NaCl and then you have H partnering with OH which of course is just water so that's what you see on this side okay so this is an example of uh, one of those reactions the precipitation reaction as we'll mention in a second but that's really a double replacement reaction okay so you can also um, as it turns out there's uh, another way of classifying reactions and the the one that I showed you just now is kind of a general type that people used to think about reaction but later on people realized that in certain reactions electrons are transferred from one species to another 
but in some of the reactions the electrons are not transferred. So as a result there's also a classification of reactions based on whether electrons are being transferred. If electrons are transferred then we call that re those, t those reactions oxidation reduction or usually shortened as redox reactions and when the electrons are not transferred then we don't call them redox reactions. Okay now it turns out that because there's two ways of classification they're basically related to each other so earlier I was mentioning combination decomposition single replacement and combustion all of these are really just examples of redox reaction as you'll see when we work through some examples all of these reactions are just you have some kind of electron being transferred from one reactant to another and so they, uh, they belong to this redox reaction category. And the double replacement reactions we mentioned earlier, where you're swapping the cations, uh, we can think about them in terms of what products they form. If they form a solid, we call them precipitation reaction. And if the reactants are uh, acids and bases, we call them acid-base reaction um, and study them differently. So in other words, all of these names, you want to think about, first of all, these four, they're also redox reactions. These guys are also double replacement, but double replacement is kind of a general term. So sometimes people like to call them specifically acid-base if it's, you know, an acid reacting with a base. Or uh, precipitation if you actually get a solid form as a result of the double replacement reaction. So in the next video, we'll go into detail into each one of these. Basically, we'll talk about precipitation reaction, acid-base, and then uh, several examples of redox reactions.